Welcome. This is the Food Allergy Mom Coffee Chat and I am Karina. I'm a food allergy meal prep expert and I help moms make food easier in their house and def specifically food allergy moms. So I want to tell you about, um, we are going to make today one of my family's favorite meals and it's allergy friendly meatballs. One of the things that I always found really hard with meatballs was that you just could not find ones that were safe. Um, they would have wheat, eggs, dairy, um, sometimes soy, all sorts of allergens in them when you buy them pre-made. And so I wanted to make a really great, easy and delicious meatball that did not have any allergens or that you could just swap out allergens for. So. If you don't know me, but uh, the way I do my recipes is I make a recipe and it will have allergens in it, but it will always have a safe replacement for it. So every time you find a recipe from me, it's going to be um, have top eight allergens plus mustard and soy free. Uh, sorry, top eight allergens plus mustard and sesame free and gluten free. So you're going to have those options to make it that way if it has those allergens. Okay, so that's what's going to be happening with this one. We're going to make meatballs. And before we get there, I just want to um, tell you about a free masterclass that I'm doing. This is happening tomorrow and Saturday, and it's going to be meal prepping for food allergies. Now, if you are unsure if meal prepping is going to help you, I want you to know that I teach it differently than most people. It's not... Um, just you know all about the time saving and all of that what I'm looking to do is show you how meal prep can help you strip away all of those foods that you can't eat but open up that whole world of foods that you can eat meal prep can do that and I want to give you a plan so that you know exactly what to buy when you're going to the grocery store and how much because that can be really overwhelming when you have food allergies and even all of those overwhelming products and all of that. I'm going to simplify that grocery shopping experience for you. And I want to help you focus on transforming really simple ingredients into delicious and easy meals that are safe for your family. So that's what meal prepping for food allergies is all about. And of course, it has all of the other non-food allergy benefits as well, like saving time, saving money, it's gonna give you more variety, all those sorts of things. So make sure you check out my, my free class. It's happening again Friday and Saturday, it's live. And you're gonna find it at friendlypantry.com forward slash masterclass, okay? So make sure you check that out. It's happening soon. You don't want to miss it. Um, you're really, it's going to help you as a food allergy mom. And it has helped me and it has helped so many people that I have taught it in the Inspired Kitchen membership. Okay, so that's um, what I want to tell you about first. And second, I want to start with the meatballs. So let me just have a drink. My coffee is almost always cold by the time I'm done because <laughs> I always just have time for it to start it up. Okay, so let me get the meat. All right, so I have got a mixture of ground beef and ground turkey, but you can use two pounds of ground beef if you want. You can mix up sausage in there if that's safe for your family, whatever you want to do. Um, and I just wanted to do the turkey and the beef this time. So what you're going to add to it is a half a cup of rinsed quinoa. And this quinoa, it's not only um, a really great absorber of all of the, the um, liquids in there, um, it's got lots of nutrients, really healthy. So this is what I'm replacing. Usually there's breadcrumbs. And that's what I'm going to replace it with. Now, what you need to know is that quinoa needs to be rinsed. I never knew this. I, it took me a long time. I actually, we hated quinoa in our house because I would make it and it would just taste really gross uh, until I figured out that you have to rinse it because there's this natural coating that gets put on it that is not, it's, it just doesn't taste good. It's just, it's naturally happens. So once you rinse it, it's fine. It goes away. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put that in with the meat. I'm just gonna stir it all up. And then I'm gonna use two eggs. And you can use eggs if they are safe for your family. But if they're not safe, you can use flax eggs. And this is one of the probably most common uh, ways to replace eggs. I really like it in this recipe because it's sort of the savory. You can do applesauce too if you like that better, but it depends on if you like that apple-y flavor in your meatballs. Um, I like kind of more savory, so that's why I'm doing this. And to make it, you just do three tablespoons of water with one tablespoon of ground flax seed or flax meal, and you let it sit. And a sitting will actually get it to be nice and thick, kind of like an egg egg consistency. So I'm gonna put that in as my two eggs. And I'm gonna stir it all around, get it all mixed. You don't wanna over mix it, but you do wanna get everything in there. Okay, and then the seasonings. And honestly, these things are so versatile. You can put whatever seasonings you want. So if you like more of a, let's say an Italian meatball, you can put like Italian seasoning or like oregano and basil. If you like it to be more of a, um, let's think about it, like let's say, um, I'm drawing a blank now, but if you like other flavors, you can definitely add any of those as well. This flavoring that I have is like a base um, flavoring. So it's got a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of onion powder. And that's gonna give you just a nice base flavor that you can use for almost anything. And if you, like I said, if you wanna jazz it up, you can definitely do that. So I'll just sprinkle that all around. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in, uh, maybe one to two tablespoons. I just grab the oil. I'm using just an avocado oil, very simple. The nice thing about cooking is that you don't necessarily have to have everything really thoroughly um, and exactly measured out like you do in baking. Where are you guys from? Thanks for joining. Let me know where you're from in the comments. Love to know, let me know how old your allergy kids are. So I'm just basically um, mixing it up and a little point here, you can definitely make these to be frozen. And I actually usually double this recipe and make some for the meal the, ma the day I'm making it and some for another day. But I wanna point out that um, this meat has already been frozen. So I had bought a little, pre-stocked up on a little bit of um, turkey meat and, and some ground beef, but I've frozen it already and I'm defrosting it now. So that means that I can't refreeze this like this. I would have to actually cook the meat first, the meatballs first, and then refreeze them. So you still can't do it. It's just, you have to make sure you do it properly. And that would be by cooking the meatballs first. Since I've refrozen this. Now, if I hadn't frozen it and it was fresh meat, it had never been for frozen, then you can definitely freeze it raw if you like to but usually what I will do is just um, pre-cook it and then have it made and then I just pull it out and just warm it up with a sauce or whatever okay so that's it that's like how many ingredients one two three four five six seven ingredients and it's totally ready to go and I just want to show you yesterday if you saw my stories I posted about these little handy things here and these are scoops. I mean, some people call them ice cream scoops, but gosh, there's so many more uses than that. Like, I have three different sizes. I use this one for my muffins. I use this one for meatballs and cookies. And then this one for like little mini meatballs and cookies. And you could do melon baller. Somebody posted that. Um, there's so many ideas that I love and it makes it so quick and fast. I'm gonna show you how fast I get these meatballs scooped because that was one thing in the beginning was that was so overwhelming for me was making meatballs because it took so long to shape them with my hands and get them on the pan. It was just crazy. So this is what I do. I scoop a little bit and I put it onto my parchment layered pan and it takes me like a second to scoop each one. 
And you want it, I always layer my um, pans with parchment because I just find everything comes off so much easier and it's just a lot easier to clean. So that is another little tip. You don't wanna have to be spending hours and hours cleaning up after you're making dinner because that is just not fun, right? You've already cooked, you've already shopped for all the, all the food. You just wanna have a little bit of an easier time cleaning up and I get that. So I use parchment paper a lot of the times. You can use foil, but if you use foil, you may need just something to keep it from sticking. There is oil in the meatballs, but um, just depends. Sometimes they, they wanna stick a little bit. So you just wanna get the scooper like nice and tight with, with the meat so that it has a nice tight shape. And I don't even make it really into a ball because, I don't know, you don't really, if you want to, you can definitely pick each one of these up and, and make it into a ball. But I find with the little dome shape, it's, it's pretty much enough. And I like to cut corners where I can. So, <laughs> shh, don't tell anyone. If it's, if it's safe for my kids and it's um, healthy and easy, after that you can start cutting corners, right? <laughs> okay, so I got them all. I'm gonna move that one over. Um, I got them all on there. Did you see how fast that was that I actually scooped out the whole pan? And there's like when four or five, like 20 meatballs on here. So it's not even just 12. So that's super easy. You're gonna bake them at, where are you gonna bake them at? For 20 to 30 minutes for at 400 degrees. And I have a um, convection oven, so I actually put it to 375. Just make it a little bit lower and do it, just watch it. You wanna make sure that it's not getting burnt or overcooked. Um, and yeah, and that's that, and then it will be good. You can add any sauce you want. In my free recipe book, um, ebook that I have, that's where this is from, You it teaches you how to make a sweet and sour sauce. That's really good, my family loves it, but like I said, this meatball recipe can go with anything. It can go with spaghetti and meatballs, or it can go with, um, plain, like if you just want a plain meatball with something, it can go with so many things. So try that out. You can get it at friendlypantry.com forward slash meal plan. And don't forget that free meal prep class, which is happening tomorrow and Saturday, friendlypantry.com forward slash masterclass. You're going to learn way more, lots of cool things, and you can go there and find more information about it. So thanks for joining me and I will see you next Thursday. Same time, same place. All right. Talk to you soon.